Welcome to Cocktail Hour. I'm Andy. And I'm the Rev. Welcome to the 10th episode, double digits, of Cocktail Hour. That's incredible, isn't it? I know, isn't it though? And today's show is brought to you by Shambord Vodka. (laughs) You got nothing to say? Well, it's, it's, it's also... Would, would it be would it be the Chambord vodka? And is that how you pronounce it? Because it's all French and everything. I don't know how to how yeah. to pronounce it. Yes, I, it's I, Chambord. I know, and and I just knew how to pronounce the drink that we're having. Okay, so <laughs> all right, we'll tell them what we're drinking. We are drinking a fleur de lis. Yes, we are. It's two ounces of Chambord flavored vodka, three quarters ounce of Chambord liqueur, two ounces of lemonade. One ounce of cranberry juice and a squeezed lemon. You shake all the ingredients together with ice and pour into a tall glass, and then you garnish with a lemon twist. Of course, Mm. I did not garnish with a lemon twist. I didn't either, and I didn't use a fresh lemon because I was too lazy to go to the grocery store, so I used some real lemon, and I just did a a little squeeze. Oh, very nice. I uh, bought one of those concentrated lemon in the bottle. Mm-hmm. And I made up lemonade from scratch and used that. Oh, you know, my wife went to the liquor store yesterday out of the kindness of her heart to um, to purchase our items. Mm-hmm. And I told her I only need, you know, two ounces of lemonade. So get the smallest thing of lemonade you can find. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, I can just go to the grocery store, uh, you know, later. And she comes home with this two liter bottle of country time <laughs> lemonade yeah this was the smallest that they had so we'll be drinking lemonade for a while yeah well that gives you some good vitamin c i guess so really? how do you how do you like the taste of your drink you know i i like it um i i i don't know if it's the way i made it because i had to make my own damn drink today but it <laughs> the aftertaste <laughs> what happened to your mixologist she usually makes the drinks you know, she's been making my bar, and she wanted to take a bath, and and was uh, she's been blogging about the construction of the bar, and she was very excited. She took a picture or two, and um, and then was trying to put her words together, nice. and so she wanted to do that instead of make my drink. So mm. I was left to my own devices tonight, and I think I did a fine job, but it, it does have. Um, a, a bit of a robotussiny aftertaste for me. So I'm not sure. I think I may have fucked it up a little bit somewhere <laughs> along the line. <laughs> but with with all of the alcohol in it and the little bit that I've eaten today, this should be a fun, fun show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it should be. <laughs> I uh, I ate breakfast food at, I don't know, one thirty or so because I was out shopping for my trip and... I haven't had anything since then. No, 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 wait, I lied. I actually had a, a cut-up apple and a little yogurt and some blueberries. So I have a little bit in my stomach. Wow, how healthy of you. <laughs> oh, and before we get on to uh, reviewing our stories, I wanted to give you additional kudos. I think you just like the kudos. That's why you keep changing the cocktail hour site because it's it looks better than it did before. You got rid of all the tabs at the top and you made it really easy on the eyes uh, to find locations and do some linking, and it looks really good. Excellent, thank you. I, I like the new theme. It's cleaner, and um, and you know, it, the tabs were so cumbersome because uh, they were just too many things that we wanted to link to. So yeah, I like it too. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, the only thing that I uh, that a newcomer to our site might be a little put off is when you link to the, our forum. There is just blank. So people might think that there's nothing there. So listeners, there you have to create an account and sign in in order to see the the topics in the forum. Yeah, you know, and I noticed that too. I actually I just figured that out yesterday. We got hit with I'm talking loads and loads and loads of spammers, loads. So I had to change the the settings and uh, you know, oh See, because I, I just went in to look at it, and it keeps me logged in all the time. But, yeah, I noticed that, too. So I'm going to have to figure out a way around that without letting the spammers in. But there are lots of topics there. There's all kinds of stuff going on there. And, um, 
and do check it out. Um, so yeah, there you go. <laughs> Oh, uh, today we are going to review the Spanish Pearl and Teopa Lakota. Oh, you finally got the pronunciation down. I did. I paid attention. You know, the author has a um, has a, a pronunciation guide slash glossary uh-huh. um, in the copy that you sent me. Yep, yeah, excellent. So, uh, how? Which one would you like to review first? Um, I usually pick. You pick this time. Let's do. Teopa first. That one's okay. near and dear to my heart, I must say, because I think I started reading that one, or the first time I read it was, good Lord, probably about six or seven years ago. And uh, I think I read it once a year. That's how much I like that story. I really liked it, too. Um, and I was I was hesitant to read it. I, I really don't have much of a reason why. I, I just, I don't know. I wasn't, it, I don't know. And it's odd for me because I really like... Um, you know, the historical pieces and the Native American uh, stuff like that. So, okay, so here we go. Teopa of Key Lakota uh, by D. Jordan Redhawk. Um, it's also available in a published book, um, but she does go through PD, which means um, there's no ebook version. So, Damn it. Andy and I, I know it. Um, it's, but I tell you what, as soon as uh, as soon as they start coming out with ebooks, this is definitely one that I will buy. Yes, I um, will too. Actually, even though I already have the printed version and you know the uh, online version through my uh, e-reader, I'm still going to make sure I donate money to to you know Red Dog's cause. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, okay, so this story is about um, Anpo and Kathleen. Um, Anpo is the youngest daughter uh, of a uh, of a, a warrior in the Lakota tribe. Um, she's raised to be a warrior. She's not she's not raised as a man. You know, she she's not passing as a man. She's still a you know still considers herself a woman, but she's a, she grows to be a strong, uh, honored warrior. Um, when she is about 12 years old, she goes out on her vision quest, and uh, she she does receive a vision of a great warrior woman killing the sacred white buffalo. The white buffalo then transforms into a blonde white woman who um, has a wound on her side in the same location, essentially, as where the buffalo had been struck down. Um, she comes to the to the uh, to the twelve year old girl. She walks over to her, um, and I believe she caresses her cheek or holds her hand or something. Calls her a uh, a, a term uh, a very intimate term of endearment for a partner, and then disappears. Um, so Anpo, who goes by a different name bef- uh, at this point. Um, is, goes back to her medicine man and or, or to her shaman and and they talk about the meanings of what this could be and it's a very powerful vision and you know it just kind of lends credence to the fact that she is going to be someone of of power and, and this vision is something that is going to um, to be very important in her life. Meanwhile, we meet Kathleen, um, who as a very young girl comes to America from Ireland with her parents and her brother. They settle on the frontier. Uh, when she's 16, she marries um, an older guy, an older widow who has some land. And, you know, it's the it's um, like the 1600s or something like that, I think. Um, so, you know, the, she doesn't have a lot of marrying options. Um, two years after she gets married, her homestead is attacked, her husband is killed, and she is taken by hostile uh, Indians and, and kidnapped. Um, she moves, she moves uh, to a couple of different people. Um, you know, she's violently raped by the, by the first guy that takes her, uh, then is traded on to another person, and um, eventually through... Um, essentially the fulfillment of the of the uh, first part of the vision, she comes to belong to Anpo. And the story t- 
talks about on Poe's life and family, Kathleen's life and family, and then eventually uh, them coming together and their journey as as uh, essentially a family also. Excellent summary. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, I really, really love this story. It is, uh, Red Hawk just weaves a great tale, uh, but basically about nothing of major significance. It's just, you know, a slice of life. It's about learning about two different people and two different cultures uh, and what happens to them on their journey. And I think it's, she did just such a marvelous job at it. And there, there are so many little nuggets of, of um, interrelationships between the characters, whether they're um, like Ampo relating to her friend Nupa, uh, who mm-hmm. was her childhood friend they grew up with. Uh, Kathleen taking care of her little brother, Stuart. Um, and then poor Kathleen's journey is just, you know, racked with terrors and pain and, and, and fear. But, you know, how, <clears throat> how you just follow these people through their lives. And it's just, you just don't want it to end when you read it, you know? Mm-hmm. Exactly. I, I really, really enjoy the historical aspects, the uh, particularly the the Native American aspects of it, um, you know, the, there's the the mystical uh, portion. Um, mm-hmm. y- you know, they they both have visions. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, oh. and the shaman interpreting the visions, and uh, oh, and how about that brutal Sundance? Holy crap! I tell you, know, you what, I'm a yeah. wimp for pain, man. And when, when they describe <laughs> Ann Poe going and uh, getting permission to do the Sundance, I tell you, I think my chest and my back hurt <laughs> during that scene because it, it was so well written. And you're like, oh, my God, I'm so it's such a weenie for pain. I mean, if I stub my toe, you know, I got to lay down. You know what I mean? Holy I mackerel. You know, I had to, um, I, at, at that point, I had to stop and Google the Sundance because it was so, um, it just sounded so brutal. And, and, you know, I, I, Kathleen's response to it, you know, she had, she hadn't been with on Poe very long. And, um, you know, we should say that, that women did not do the, the Sundance and, right. You know, since Anpo was not trying to pass as a man, um, you know, it it was very difficult for her to be able to even get permission to be able to do this. Mm-hmm. And and I think that that the author did a great job of describing the the different stages of the of the, uh, the ceremony. And I think it was like four days mm-hmm. of, of different, um, you know, sweats and, and, uh, prayers, I think. Right. 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 Um, and when I was reading it, you know, I had the, I had an image in my head and I wanted to see how accurate it was. So I Googled, um, you know, Lakota Sundance and I, I did make a note and I want, I want to read this, um, you know, and, and I want I want everybody to kind of get an image in their head of of this huge gathering mm-hmm. of people um, in in a, a large enclosed area with this huge tree um, with uh, with lines attached to the to the very top of the tree, um, and and then I, I, I'm going to read this. Okay. Um, Kathleen watched as her warrior was pulled from the thongs hanging from the pole as well as the ones attached to the stakes pounded into the floor behind. As the shaman moved away from Anpo, she could see that her wife, uh, she could see her wife swaying back and forth, pulling at the rawhide held that held her pinned. Um, and then I, I made a note that said, the entire Sundance description had me on edge. Mm-hmm. I looked it up and saw a pic of the thongs attached to the chest. The author did a great job of expressing the emotion of both women. Um, and and at this point, at this point, Kathleen and Anpo had had been joined. Um, and, 
and, and uh, you know that 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 also takes me back to the um, you know when when the first night that Anpo and and Kate are together. I'm sorry. See, I'm I'm confused. I always want to say Kate. It's Kathleen. Yeah. Um, when when Anpo and Kathleen are together and. Anpo, oh yeah yeah yeah. That first night I forgot. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. yeah. You know, Anpo has had literally years to reflect upon her vision Mm -hmm. and and feel this this anxiety over the hurt that she knows that she's going to cause this woman yep right because she's had this vision she had this vision vision when she was 12 years old Mm -hmm. Uh, so you know she's had years to to talk with the shaman and to understand that that she's going to hurt this woman which she does not want to do yeah Right. And, and, and so she's very cautious and careful. And, and here is, you know, so Kathleen finally is, is with Anpo and, 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 you know, Kathleen's been brutally raped and terrified. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she's terrified. She is. She's terrified. She thinks that Anpo is a guy. Mm -hmm. And, and so Anpo very carefully and slowly undresses and, and essentially lets Kathleen know that I'm a woman like you. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to hurt you. And, you know, so, so, okay, I'm going to get through this really quickly. And then there's something else that I want to say real quick. Okay. Okay. So, so. Anpo goes to the medicine man or to the shaman and says, I have been blessed so much with Kathleen, who I love and I've been waiting for and we love each other and we have this we have this relationship now and I know that this is my destiny because of my vision and and here we go and I want to do the Sundance because I want to show uh, you know, I want to show the God that that I am thankful, mm-hmm. and essentially that that's really what the Sundance is all about: mm-hmm. is to show that you are thankful and you are willing to um, to exchange. You know, you're willing to sacrifice right. your your body and your emotions for the gift that the God has given you. Mm-hmm. Um, so, here's where I want to call bullshit. I'm going to call bullshit right. right away. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so they kiss a lot. Yeah, they, they do. A lot. They kiss a they lot. T- they, they touch a lot. They, they sleep together. They're very comfortable with each other. They're very, um, aroused. Yeah, but they together. sleep together as in not the, you know, more in the traditional sense, not in the getting to know you sense. Right, right, right. This is where but the bullshit a- cons come in, right? <laughs> right exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say, three years. She talks to she talks to uh, Anpo talks to the shaman and says, you know, I I want to be able to satisfy her. We want to. I I feel I feel the need to connect with her uh, on this on this sexual level. Mm-hmm. But you know, I don't have a penis, and I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do. So the shaman says, well, I will seek a vision for you yeah. to help you along your way, yada, yada, blah, mm-hmm. blah. Mm-hmm. And the shaman comes back and says, but it, it takes him a while. It, it, so he finally comes back and he says, you know, um, I discovered that you just need to find your own path. And then like three fucking years later, it, the, the she's out on the range with her dad mm-hmm. talking about whatever. And he's like, well, you know, you ever touch yourself? Well, Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. It's like what? Ampo couldn't figure that fucking one out? What the hell? That's what I'm she saying. She figured out self-pleasuring. Hello. What the hell? Holy crap. So, okay. So I call bullshit on that. <laughs> and and then, 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 okay. So they're together and Kathleen, you know, it turns out Kathleen's pregnant from... Her the rapist. Rape, right. From the, from the first, from the first uh, guy that abducted her, um, Anpo is thrilled beyond belief right. that she's pregnant. And Kathleen the whole time is like, really? Can it really be this simple? This is going to be Anpo's son? And and right from the beginning, that's exactly what it is. And I love that, um, you know, she uh, Kathleen is Ina, 
and um, Anpo is Ina something out. Ina, Ina up. Noop. Is it Ina, Ina up? Noop. Ina Noop. So, Whatever. I can't say him either without the glossary. That's okay. I'm, I'm right. I, I got that one. Woo-hoo! Ina Noop. Um, you know, mother, mom too, essentially. Mm-hmm. You know, and and it's so, to me it was wonderful mm-hmm. that, you know, here comes this, this baby coming from the most, uh, you know, violent of ways that has, I mean, and, and his conception has affected Kathleen so much that, you know, she and Anpo are, are unable to relate on a sexual level because of the trauma of the rape and yada yada. But Anpo is right there. Yeah. And this is my son. You know, these are your grandparents. These are your aunt and uncle. And, and it was awesome. Yeah, that was awesome. That That was awesome. You know, what other part I like too, is I, the thoughtfulness that Anpo did certain things for uh, Kathleen and more, I, I think the best example of that was when they went to the French trader yeah. And um, Kathleen saw a little tin whistle, and it reminded her, I think, of her grandmother. Yep. Uh, but when the trader said he wanted four furs for it, she's like, oh, hell no, that's just too too pricey, no way, I ain't going to do it. So Kathleen went on to look at other stuff, and Ampo came over, and he got the, or the, he got the, gave the trader the four furs and took the tin whistle as a gift. So I, and, and, yeah, 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 absolutely. But, you know, the, Best part of that mm. was that Anpo understood what the fuck that guy was saying. To I know, him. isn't that great? Because Kathleen was teaching Anpo English while Anpo is teaching uh, the Lakota language to Kathleen. So that was Absolutely. really cool. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> I loved how Anpo wanted to push the elders aside when Kathleen was going through labor. <laughs> She's like, "I gotta get to my woman. She needs me." Like, "No, no, no, sit your ass down, damn it! <laughs> this is the way that it's supposed to work. You wait." And, uh, you know, the midwives and the uh, medicine man will take care of it. That was just cute how she's basically biting her nails. She's all frenzied out. And and did you notice that 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 scene was almost a mirror image of the scene where Anpo was being born? Oh, yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm, Excellent mm -hmm. catch. Yeah, it, it it was it was great, you know. Uh, for and I think one of the things that I enjoyed the most about the the story was that no one tried to make Anpo into a man. Yeah, you she's kind of like and, two souls, you know. Kind of like they knew she was physically a woman, but she uh, was destined by uh, the spirit world, I guess, to be a warrior. Right, right, exactly, and and but but. You know, in, in so many of the things, uh, so many of the uh, uh, kind of gender bending things that we read, you know, like the book that we're going to talk about next, you know, in Anpo's mind, she was not a man mm-hmm. and she did not feel the need to pass as that. Other mm-hmm. people may have perceived her as that, like the French trader and, and, um, and Kathleen's brother mm-hmm. when, when, they, when they made their way back. With um, with their son to meet Kathleen's family. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was the first thing that Stuart thought. Yeah, that's and, right. And and you know, I, I also you know when I was reading that, and then um, Stuart began to describe um, on Poe's appearance. I never, you know, that always caught me off guard because I never. I never pictured her as wearing, you know, as having the bared legs and just the, the loincloth. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I didn't, I guess I didn't, I never really pictured her as that. I always pictured her with the leggings and, and things like that. I think, I think, but didn't she at some point wear the traditional male garb? Maybe not. No, she, she did. Um, for She did, but, but when Stuart described her, um, Oh yeah, he did describe seeing her legs. I do remember that part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Be- and, and, and that that kind of threw me off because I didn't. That wasn't how I saw that in my head. But you know the the okay. So so after after um, their kid yeah. is uh, a couple years old, Kathleen decides that it's time for 
uh, for them. And, and her, she and Anpo had been joined. They've been living together. Um, and, oh, that was the other thing I wanted to talk about is how um, the author did a great job of explaining how, like, the lodges are the women's lodges. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of uh, pagan and Native American culture is all matrilineal, you know, matrilineal. Mm-hmm. See, I've already had, see, I've had my, my full drink <laughs> and, um, and now I'm almost done with my first glass of wine. So you're looking for matriarchal is the word you're looking for? No, no. I was looking for matrilineal, but, but I think matriarchal is, is more fitting. Okay. <laughs> so you're right. Okay. Oh, that was hard for you to admit, huh? Oh. <sighs> Oh, I hate when they have I need another drink now. I can't believe okay. you went from a fleur de lis to a wine. What the hell? Huh? You went from fleur de lis to a wine? I did. Because I I couldn't handle another fleur de lis. All right, fine. That's a that's a lot of fucking alcohol. Yeah, it is. Okay, so I needed to tone it down a little bit. With some more alcohol. What's it with? With a little less alcohol. <laughs> it's another drink. It's more alcohol, sister. All right, then. All right. So, um, uh, okay, so so uh, I'm going to apologize to the listeners now because I'm blasted, and we're just going to launch off into whatever direction we happen to launch off in. <laughs> yeah, but we're, okay. still, we're still not done with Teopa, though, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Okay, so, um, so a no, uh, what is her name? Kathleen? No. Ann Poe? Ann Poe. <laughs> Have okay. a sip of wine. So, okay, I'm going to take... <sighs> okay, so <laughs> Ann Poe is, 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 understands that Kathleen needs to connect with her family again. Her family thinks that she's dead. They bundle up the boy and they head off. And it takes them, what, a month, two months? Yeah, it's a couple months, I think. To go across the frontier and and the, the the biggest thing was is that Kathleen really didn't even know where the hell they were. Yeah. That's why it you took know, them a she, couple of months. Right. You know, she didn't know specifically where her family had settled. So they headed off in the in the basic direction of it mm-hmm. and and through connecting with different people eventually um literally ran into her brother mm-hmm. who was going to shoot on Poe um, because they had had a lot of different um, raids and there's this back and forth. And, and then it was also interesting that Kathleen, when, when she spoke with her, her mother had found out that the settlers had taken their revenge for Kathleen's husband and uh, and her apparent death out on a, uh, a a nearby tribe, and they were innocent. Yeah, she said, you know, she said well, we looked for you. They they went and they slaughtered this this settlement of of Indians but we couldn't find you we figured they had already settled you know shuffled you off and Kathleen says you killed a bunch of innocent people yeah no wonder they're so hostile yeah and and you know that kind of makes you kind of take a step back and think wow you know how often did that kind of shit really happen probably a lot mm-hmm. because I, I would imagine to uh, non-native Americans they probably just thought they were all one big tribe. I mean, to the uneducated, that is. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So they just, just took their anger out on the closest people, unfortunately. Absolutely. So, you know, there, the, that was one thing that I think the author really did is, is kind of gave you an insight into the, the types of, of situations that you might have found at that time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. But of course, this is where we call bullshit, um, because Absolutely. what? Yeah, what happens when uh, Ann Poe and Kathleen get to Kathleen's family's house? Uh, Kathleen doesn't know how to explain her relationship with Ann Poe in conjunction with the Christian beliefs, so she she kind of diverts the conversation and allows uh, Ann Poe the chance to 
basically go tend to the animals, if you will, uh, in the barn. And Kathleen um, uh, talks with her family, gets reacquainted, and Ampa well, winds you, up sleeping in the barn. And it, you know, honestly, you know, her dad comes out. Kathleen's father comes out and says, "You know, thanks for bringing her home. Uh, you can go on ahead and bed down in the barn before you leave in the morning." Yeah, yeah. And so. Ampo can't help but feel that Kathleen's reaction to not being recognized uh, means that Kathleen, she interprets it to mean Kathleen is ashamed of her. And, and honestly, it does seem that way because, you know, every time Ampo tries to bring up their joining mm -hmm. and Kathleen kind of changes, changes the, the subject and diverts it to, well, that's not really what it means to the white folks, so, you know, don't worry about it. And she continually changes the subject. Yeah. And and Anpo can't help but feel, oh, wow. Yeah, I'm not saying that her feeling ashamed would not be the correct reaction. Yeah. Um, I think the bullshit part of it comes in when, when uh, Anpo can't get past it and doesn't wait to confront <laughs> Kathleen about it, about it, and she winds up uh, throwing Kathleen away or, in effect, uh, divorces her, and she goes off. She leaves. I agree 100%. I mean, you know, Kathleen comes out in the morning, and she sleeps with the kid up in her, in her old loft, and, and the whole time she's like, I really should go talk to Aunt Po. I, I know how this must seem. and But you know what? I'll talk to her about it in the morning. Yeah. I don't know how to deal with this right now. I, I, I mean, which it's is overwhelming. Yeah, but which is another point. If you think about it, if they're traveling for two months, what the fuck are they talking about? I mean, Kathleen should have at least found a way to discuss the situation or the differences in their culture, so that Ampo knows what she's getting into. I mean, why That's didn't they have really that bad. discussion? That's a good point. I have no idea. Yeah, but what it comes across to to the reader is. Kathleen is is scared and and ashamed of her situation, not necessarily just of Anpo, but holy shit, if they find out that we're fucking living together as essentially husband and wife, yeah. they're going to they're going to come unglued. So, you know, I can't deal with this right now. I just came back. We'll deal with it in the morning. I'll find a way to talk about it in the morning. I'll find a way to talk about it in the morning. Yeah, and they're they're in their 20s, right? And they're their early right. 20s. So, I mean, I get that. I get it. It's just so aggravating when you come up from a more mature perspective thinking, you know, um, you know, when you're that age, you do. You, you sometimes divert and put off and procrastinate. And on the other side of the coin, you know, you get emotionally invested in whatever it is you're feeling. And, and I'm sure on Poe, feeling that Kathleen was ashamed, she probably felt destitute and cast away. And... And and just her heart was broken, and so she went off. I, you know, I don't, you know, I don't say that they're false reactions or false impressions that they're, the the author is giving. No, I, I do. I, I still think that yeah. she she they could have worked through that. Of course, there would have there wouldn't have been any conflict if they would have worked through what their story was before they got there. So I, I realized the author was trying to do conflict. But here's the problem I have: is that after Ampo leaves without never talking to Kathleen, two years pass by. Two years before Kathleen finally says, God damn, you know, after this, all this Tika's having, or I'm sure I'm saying his name wrong, he's having, you know, night terrors, she's thinking about Anpo and the family, her family is trying to push her into marrying some other fucking eligible bachelors, and, and she has this scary dream about the Lakota tribe dying in the winter, and so now she's finally, oh my God, I need to go back. Two years! What the hell? It, yeah, it ain't I, right. But uh, <clears throat> primarily, I gotta say, I blame Ampo. Wait a fucking hour. Yeah, no, Wait I a, couldn't agree yeah. more. But, you know, you try to think of it from how young they are, you know, and how yeah, emotions they, 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 run they, high they, when you're young like but, that. But it's not like they've been together for two months. They've been together for three fucking years. Yes, it's a lot of time to be invested and have a kid. So, yes, and, and I they agree. They love each other. I mean, they've declared their love. They have said, I love you. You are mine forever. You are everything I want, although we're still not having sex. But that's okay <laughs> because, you know, I'm not really sure. The, apparently the visions haven't aligned properly. And, and, you know, I haven't figured out that, oh, wait, I masturbate and you're a woman too. Let me just, you know, stimulate your clit. But that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to oh, for just a few minutes. <laughs> Okay. So, okay. So 
she stays up on po stays up all night long mm -hmm. in in the in in the little uh barney area with the horses and whatnot mm -hmm. okay she stays up all night long kathleen rushes out of bed okay i gotta go fucking talk to on po because i know that she's upset and and, and yes she was 100 percent wrong to go to bed and think well i'll just talk to her in the morning because on po is an emotional person and you never know what's going to happen but still mm -hmm. really they've been at three years declaring love okay Kathleen is laughing and joking with her family. She's obviously happy. Oh, she's also ashamed of me, which she wasn't ashamed of her. She was ashamed of the situation and the reaction that her family is going to do. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> it However. Comes, it, it comes down to that, you know, two-month prep work they could have done. Exactly. Okay. So, you know, but I, I got it. I got it. I got it. Hand it to Stuart, her little her little bigoted brother. Yeah, he turned around. He surely did. Took her ass right back. Yep. Well, not right back. Okay, two years later, <laughs> took her ass back. Well, yeah, he had to see how devastated Kathleen was and how unhappy she was before he's yeah. like throws up his hands and go, oh, fuck it, <laughs> and takes her back. Not to mention the fact that the kid is having constant night terrors. Yeah, yeah. Poor thing. And, yeah, uh, so, you know, so he takes her back. And, and withstands the barbs. Oh, but I got to say, you know, when, when um, you know, Anpo is just emotionally devastated yeah. by this, by this two year separation. Yeah. And, and, and the author did such a good job of, of letting us see that even though she had eventually started associating with people again and not just hiding out in the you know out on the plains by herself and and you know she she smiled but you know it wasn't really happy smile it was i'm allowing people to be by me again when when she saw uh <laughs> when she saw that kathleen was back and the the courtship then that happened that wasn't able to happen previously, you mm -hmm. know, when, when, when they first got together yeah. and then Nupa was courting on Poe's older sister and explaining the process to Kathleen about, you know, if you were a proper, you know, a true Lakota woman, I would woo you the same way, um, to watch, to watch, uh, or to, to read about on Poe courting you know when when kathleen said you know yes i'm back i love you so much and and anpo said will you join with me again and kathleen said something to the effect of well whether i join with you or not remains to be seen yeah yeah and then the following courtship was really cute it was it was awesome and then to see to 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 read about stewart's reaction yeah. To their courtship, you know, where he tries to, he pulls a knife on Anpo. <laughs> yeah, because he thought Anpo was going to hurt her. That was really cute. It was. It was. It was great. Oh, and, and, and to, go ahead. What? I was going to say, I didn't know how far you were going to go out with that. I just wanted to back up just a little bit, though. Did Did you, like, hold your breath when Tika went over and introduced himself again to Anpo? I mean, I you know, when did. they first got back. I was like, I was holding my breath reading, and I was like, I almost had tears in my eyes. It was so cute. <laughs> was I, I did the same thing it was so touching you know she's she's still just emotionally devastated and and she she knows that something's happening because of the activity at her mom's uh uh, uh teepee you mm -hmm, know mm -hmm. and 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 then to have that little boy come over and she's like and she even says you know man he he looks familiar but you know, with the summertime, uh, you know, at summer camp, all of the kids look familiar yeah. because you, you see them once a year. And, and then when he's, when he says, are you, you're, you're on Po, you're my Ina Noop. Mm -hmm. And she's like, what? <laughs> yes, I am. Mm -hmm. And it was just like that. Yeah. And, and to, and to see their, their courtship come through again. And it was, it was a great, great feeling. And, and it, 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 it allowed me to feel better about all of the bullshit that I <laughs> right. call previously it, it, to that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, but I do want to also call bullshit uh -oh. on um, 
on the false visions, uh, the false vision of of uh, that Anpo had of Kathleen returning with a new man on her arm and essentially them laughing at her and saying, you know, we're done with you, um, you know, goodbye. That's true. She never followed that up. No. And then the, the other vision, which I think made me even more, um, uh, it, not mad, but I mean, that, that stood out more was, you know, leading up to Kathleen and the kid and Stuart leaving, Kathleen continued to have these, these visions of the Lakota people of, of her family, um, her Lakota family freezing to death. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I believe she, didn't she even see Anpo in there? Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, of, of, you know, her frozen eyes and, and the, the frost on her lenses and, uh, you know, and so she comes back and, and the shaman and the medicine man, and they go, they go request visions on this and they receive their visions and, and apparently they prepare properly for the winter, but it's never actually discussed. That, but that, but I figured out why she did it though. She she did it because I think the end the end was the shaman adopted Kathleen because of the vision. You're right. Yeah, yeah I think that's right, why she right. built that vision in there. <clears throat> but it was I a very dramatic that. vision, and yeah, it, then she glossed over it and said, "Well, they know they're going to have to prepare extra food for the winter, and then that's the end you see of it." So yeah, I can see why. It would it would peak your bullshit meter, but I think it was the end was that they, the shaman was so grateful that Kathleen saved their tribe that uh, she he adopted her so that she could be a Lakota woman, and yeah, then therefore right. you know Ampo's courtship could happen. Right, you're right, you're right, and yeah. um, I, I just it, their connection just it was such a feel good thing. Yeah, yeah, it was. You know, um, and and they both were very stubborn and and strong willed and um, it, it would I just I, I did I enjoyed it and and even though I didn't want to read it um, or it wasn't that I didn't want to read it I just it, I didn't feel motivated to read it yeah. I'm so happy that I did and I'm glad you did too and maybe who knows you might reread it once a year like I do <laughs> I really like well, that story. I, I plan to uh, continue to pester PD mm-hmm. into um, into uh, going ebook. Yep. Um, and then I'll buy it because I, I absolutely enjoyed it. And I know that she has some other stuff too, right? Yeah, she does. So apparently, I need to go. Um, she's a great. Yeah, that. she's a great storyteller. Uh, and I don't think there was one story that I've read on the net that I didn't care for. I mean. Some of them more than others, but, but she's a great storyteller, and uh, she has her own site, um, and she has a uh, – she did have a little, you know, like almost like a weekly blog at some point where she would talk about what she's up to and what she's doing, but I don't know how often she's updated that uh, in the last couple of years. But, you know, she's, um, she's uh, an amazingly talented writer. Well, we'll make sure to have all of those things uploaded onto the uh, onto the site um, to include in the show notes and all of those things, so all of you can go enjoy this wonderful, wonderful story. Yep. Um, so, speaking of wonderful, wonderful stories, in my opinion, anyway, um, let's move on to the Spanish Pearl by Catherine Friend. Excellent. All Excellent. right. So I, I had started to write a uh, a summary mm-hmm. of this, mm-hmm. and um, after I got a few minutes into it, I, I decided, you know what, I, I think I'm just going to read what she wrote. All right, or go what, for it. Whoever the hell wrote her blurb, I'm going to read this. Okay, okay, go for it, yeah. All right, here we go. Uh, when Kate Vincent and her partner travel to Spain, Kate is accidentally transported back in time, way back in time, to 1085, what does a woman like Kate do in a world with no antibiotics, no feminism, and no coke, uh, no diet coke? She denies it as long as possible, then sets her mind to getting home. Tricky with her now useless 21st century skills, things don't go well. Kate is captured by a band of mercenary soldiers and becomes an unwitting, unwitting pawn. Excuse the alcohol. Uh, <laughs> in the violent conflict between the Catholic kings and the Islamic Moors. 
In her struggle to stay alive and return to the future, Kate must flee exotic harems, filthy dungeons, and treacherous Moorish courts. But when a sword-brandishing woman with an astonishing secret sweeps into Kate's life, Kate is suddenly torn between two women and between two centuries. The Spanish Pearl is an epic adventure spiced with humor, lust, and danger, a story with surprising turn, uh, twists that will capture your imagination just as Kate's dilemma captures your heart. Okay, so The Spanish Pearl uh, and um, its sequel, The Crown of Valencia, um, are actually uh, two of my favorite stories. And I had forgotten just how much I enjoyed them uh, uh, until I, I read the Spanish Pearl again. Um, I, I like them very much. Um, <laughs> I know you had quite a bit of bullshit to call on them. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, let me, let me preface it by saying I did like both of the stories. I did. I really ultimately liked them because I like historical novels. Uh, I was fascinated by how the author was able to, put you right in the middle of the action and uh, made no apologies for things that that she wrote that were not necessarily comfortable, uh, that she told the tale and did a, a really good job of it. So I would advise anybody that likes historical novels to purchase this book and its companion. But to me, there were a few things that really just... Uh, just rankled me about the character Kate, uh, who is the one that goes back to, um, what was it, you said 1085? Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought that Kate's stubbornness outweighed her sense and her smarts, and I had such a difficult time not wanting to, you know, bitch slap her from here to next week that she essentially was, as the author tells it, motivated to go and find her way to the future or to her present, what should have been her future, um, because of a child that her and her partner were going to adopt. And so she, even though she found her heart in 1085 in the form of a gender-bending female named Lewis, uh, you know, a love that she'd never experienced before. They fit, even though they were passionate um, in, in their different views, um, both stubborn, that she was so transfixed to getting back to her own time uh, because of this child that initially she she really didn't want to be a parent and she was being cajoled into it by her, her partner, uh, that she, above everything else, she felt like she had to get back to the present. Because of that. And I just thought to myself, as I'm reading about this character, I'm thinking, are you fucking kidding me? Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Because it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Um, it just seemed to me almost like you know, that the child was too focused because that really wasn't who Kate wanted to be. She didn't want to be that parent. I'm thinking, you know, no, nah, she really wants to get back because she wants chocolate and, you, you know, know it, uh, it, Diet it, Coke. and But... The, the whole idea of her trying to all of a sudden being, you know, the noblesse oblige just didn't work for me. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I, I, I think that she just became obsessed with the idea of being able to provide Arturo with what, what she had had, or what she, I'm sorry, what she didn't have as a child. You know, there's, she had a lot of internal dialogue about, um, you know, that, that, her parents loved each other very much, but really didn't have any time for her. And and how it was not Arturo's fault that he was an orphan, and, and, and what a great parent her partner Anna would be, but that she she sort of became obsessed with with the idea that she had to be there for him, that that she could that she could understand what it was like not to have had that that connection and 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 that she could provide that for him but i agree that that it 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 didn't seem to be a necessarily realistic goal for her and i think at the you know at the end she realized that you know she said you know what 
Anna is the one that wanted to be the parent, and and she's the one that is going to to take care of him and and give him everything that he needs. And and really, since she fell in love with Luis, she knew that that she and Anna couldn't be together that way anymore. And you know, she would just end up being that 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 ex parent, that ex wife parent, that that the kid used to uh, to kind of work against the other. And, and, you know, she just kept going back and forth about it. Yeah, but you um, know what? how it would have worked? I mean, personally, you know, being the armchair quarterback, um, if they had already had Arturo and she had an emotionally vested interest, I could see her obsession to coming back to the present. Right. Because then she would have had that, uh, you know, Arturo would have been in her heart. You know what I mean? But Arturo couldn't even pick, couldn't even draw her into the picture. That they yeah, had, no doubt, right? no doubt. So I mean, I I got to tell you that just that was the weakest part of the story for me. I mean, and that's right. just my perception. You know, my impressions of it. I just I like the story overall, but that just that just kept wrangling me every time I would. She would just stubbornly uh, right. want to get back to the present for an ideal that um, she did. That didn't exist. Yeah, it just really. it bothered me. It really, really bothered me. And and I think that you're right. I think you know, thinking about it, I think that you're right. It was a really weak motivation that in in the re, you know with the rest of the story, um, just kind of seemed to be to be tossed out there as this is what the motivation is going to be because there isn't anything else. Yes, she missed her friends. She missed her dog. But that was what the author had set as as the motivation for her to get back. And without that motivation, the rest of the story wouldn't have happened. So, um, you know, we're going to have to just kind of let that one go. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more because otherwise um, Crown of Valencia um, – would, well, no, let's not talk well, about really, Well, really, yeah. none, of the, none, of, none of the rest of it would have happened because the entire, I mean, w- the entire uh, uh, last portion of the book is all about her getting to that second cave. Okay, so let's talk about it. Let, let's go back. Let's take a few steps back, okay? Mm-hmm. So, so Kate, uh, Kate and Anna, they can't adopt Arturo right away because he has a fever so Kate really wants to go explore this cave Um, Anna wants to go explore this uh, Moorish palace so they kind of compromise and and, um, they both go to the palace where Kate sits and speaks with the, a gentleman named Carlos and he tells her about these these hidden passageways uh, in the palace uh, from where the harem is and and they they find a painting that um, that they have a hard time explaining because it has uh, uh, perception. Like a, Right, right. It has perception, like a depth perception, 3D-ish type thing where, you know, you can see uh, that, that hadn't happened yet. Mm-hmm. And they couldn't, the uh, uh, archaeologists or whatever, couldn't explain how that particular painting um, came to be. And Kate makes a comment because the inscription on the painting uh, says two and then the the name is kind of scraped away, but she can make out the E from KV, and she says KV. Hey, those are those are my initials. Yeah. And Kate is also an artist, um, right? So it it does play into the story later. Um, absolutely. Yeah. So so Kate then they get done. Uh, they get done with the, or she gets done with the the palace and says, I'm going to go check out the cave. And there's a janitor there that says, no, 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 you no go cave. Mm -hmm. No go cave. Mm -hmm. And Kate's like, "Uh, you're weird. I'm just going to go over to the cave. So she goes to the cave and then ends up back in time. Yeah. Which I I thought, I thought Kathleen did a really good job with, or Catherine Friend, the author did a really good job with uh, the whole time shift. Um, to get Kate into the past, you, yeah, the 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 whole um, 
you know, her heel hurt, so she found a ledge and lay down on the ledge in the cave and says something about if you are lost, there's an inscription. If you are lost, uh, seek the cave at Altamira or something like that. Yeah, some other yeah, cave. something like that, yeah. And then she's there, there's this bright flash of light and she begins to spin and feels sick and passes out and then she's um, in the past. Yeah, yeah. It it, it is uh, she Catherine did a really good job with the story. She really overall she did. Um you know, the the things I take I take issue with <laughs> aside. Uh, yeah. It is definitely worth the read, and uh, listeners, you would do yourself a disservice if you do not go out and buy this book and its companion, uh, Crown of Valencia. Absolutely. You know, there's, um, you know, the character of Luis is uh, is awesome, I thought. Yeah, yeah. I like that whole gender-bending thing. We've talked about that before, how we both like that. Yeah, and, um, you know, and, and there's, a, um, there's a Xena-esque uh, quality yeah. yeah, her with the the black hair and the blue eyes. Yeah, and and, uh, and Kate Kate has green eyes, but um, brown hair. If I remember right, right. yeah. <laughs> so um, she didn't get the Gabrielle and, thing, but it's all right. It's all right. No, and 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 Kate is is very solid in her lesbianism, and and finds herself really struggling with um, with the friendship that she finds with Louise. Okay, so let, let's take another step back. So Kate is transported. <laughs> Kate is transported back to 1085. Uh, Moors, Christians in Spain, conflict, conflict. Um, El Cid and, uh, you know, and, and, and mercenaries. And um, it's, it's very interesting. And, and Catherine Friend does a, a really good job of, of kind of um, mapping that kind of conflict out for us. Mm-hmm. Um, so Kate shows up, and she's got on her Doc Martens, um, some cargo shorts, and a, a tight purple shirt that has some type of political message on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and and then she sees these guys on horseback coming, and she thinks she's being um, she thinks she's part of a uh, a reality TV show. Yeah, some on, reena- historical reenactment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Un- un- until some people get killed. Yeah, right? yeah, until some heads get lopped off. Then she's like, holy <laughs> fuck, what the hell? <laughs> so so Kate is is transported by, by Luis and um and uh some some other guys that, that she's with and um and she's transported back to uh uh, a Moorish palace, the palace that she and Anna had just been touring, um, and shuffled off into the harem, where you know she has some more rude awakenings by um, the clothes that she's forced to wear, mm-hmm. and and um, and she, you know, she starts to to kind of um, bond with with some of the women and the descriptions of the harem itself and and uh, the animals that are there and the way the women, um, uh, you know, kind of relate to the, to the, the, the rulers. And it, it's very interesting. And it's, it was, you know, it's very different, of course, from uh, Knights of Silk and Sapphire. Oh, yeah, it's like in top and toe opposite end of the, of the spectrum. Yeah, there, there's, there's no lady loving in, in this harem. Um, Sadly. Sadly, because there there could have been, but this isn't that kind of a book. Mm-mm. So, um, you know, the only thing. Oh, oh, and I love, <laughs> I love the the two eunuchs that are there. I forget Ali and and Suli, I believe, and and Kate teaches them how to do the the Malcolm X one fist salute yes. and says, <laughs> teaches them how to say. Um, is it something Malcolm X be free, Malcolm X free or some shit like no, that? No, soon you'll be free or set me free. <laughs> something. I, yeah, it was really cute. That was pretty funny, actually. Yeah, and, and you know the the different. She's singing, you know, uh, heard it through the grapevine, and you know, and then 
so so she develops these different relationships and she's trying to get the fuck out of the harem and and escape so that she can get back to her own time in this other cave which is like two weeks away she can't ride a horse she has no skills whatsoever um as far as catching her, <laughs> her food or feeding herself exactly. or or anything, so she, you know, she's really, you know, she's trying to make this plan, but, but she, she's, and every, first of all, every no, goddamn go plan she has goes ass up. It's ridiculous. It does. Yeah. So, so she, um, she develops this friendship with Luis, and and you know they have this playful camaraderie type thing, and. And, you know, she continually is like, Jesus, he's, I'm, I'm really attracted to him. But, you know, just because I've gone back 920 years doesn't mean that I'm no longer a lesbian. And she continues to, to hammer that into herself. Yeah. You know, I, I'm a lesbian. I'm a lesbian. Jesus, I'm a lesbian. What? Oh, I'm sorry. No, she says, goddess, I'm a lesbian. She's agnostic. She, she you know, and, and, um. Luis is obviously attracted to her, but it appears that there's some other woman that's taking the secret passageway up to Luis's room. And, you know, all, all in all, without, without spending a load of time going into the story, there's a lot of, of uh, uh, intrigue and um, quite a bit of blood and slicing of things. And, and humor, obviously, and torture. There's all kinds of things. Uh, yeah. Psychological trauma. There's all... There, I mean, there's... It's a cornucopia. <laughs> it is. And, and there was... Um, so, Luis becomes, you know, the, eventually... Um, eventually, Luis and Kate decide that the only way to save themselves is to get married. Um, and then, on their wedding night, Kate decides, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to ride this out. And yeah, I'm really attracted to this guy and my entire self image is being thrown on its head, but I'm here. I'm going to live in the moment. And she decides to act on her attraction to Luis on their wedding night and accidentally rips his penis off. (laughs) Yeah. His Mr. Sugar. Um. (laughs) And it's, you know, this leather, phallus filled with sugar and and that leads to one of my favorite things uh just shortly after that they're riding on a horse together and um kate can feel mr sugar pushing up behind her and louise says you are impressed with my sweetness eh (laughs) well yeah it's a good thing i'm so glad that she didn't put in one of those like lines from uh one of those um uh, I'm trying to think of the actor Bruce Campbell movies. Give me some sugar, baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly an army of darkness. I love that, <laughs> I love that movie. That was great. <laughs> oh, oh so, that is great. Yeah, we, um, we, you know, if we talk about it anymore, we might as well not have the listeners read the damn book because you, know, you don't want to give it all away. But it is. It is definitely worth the read. Um, it so is. get your ass out and buy it. There, there's, yeah, and there, there are some very serious themes in in the book as well, though. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's this whole, um, you know, Kate can't can't seem to understand how Luis can completely shut off the female part of himself, mm-hmm. herself. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and and. It kind of pisses me off because she continually calls him she and refers to him as a woman when they're together. And and through the entire thing, I'm just thinking to myself, she's going to totally fuck this up. Yeah, yeah. And out him. Because she totally fucks up everything she does anyway, which is also another reason why at times that character annoys the crap out of me. Right. And, and, And she eventually does fuck it up. Yeah. But it's with with somebody who's already known the whole time um i did want to touch on one thing that one of the one of the members of the forum touched on Mm -hmm. um and and asked the question you know luis is eventually discovered by someone who hates him one of the the members of the forum had talked about today and and what she had said was that you know she really loved the book but she didn't understand why there had to be the rape of Lewis. 
uh, of Luis and Luis, and, yeah. <laughs> and and it it just seemed that there was no other way there was no other way to honestly deal with that. Gudesto hated Luis. Right. Hated. And for so many reasons, for for the oath that that Luis had broken, for the 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 tight knit group that they had had that Luis had effectively broken up, and then on top of all of that, because the the woman that Gudesto had wanted to marry seduced Luis, and Luis slept with her. Mm-hmm. So. When Gudesto finds out that Luis is really a woman, there's no other, there's no other course of action that would have been believable. Yeah, that's true because of that hatred, and it, it gave Gudesto, you know, power and to to demoralize and degrade Luis. It was it was the tool to use, and it was necessary. Yeah, Absolutely. to be honest in the story and to be true to the characters, it it made sense in the context. Unfortunately, um, right, but it, it, there it is. Uh, particularly when Gudesto had already a, a, and Kate knew what Gudesto was going to do because Gudesto had done the same thing to her except that she snapped out of it faster Yeah. the, the thing with Luis is that Gudesto knew how to how to completely um, unravel Luis mm-hmm. you know the way that he stripped her yeah, and had and had all of the trappings of Luis hanging on the wall just out of Elena's reach. Yep, yep. And and just to tear her down, and then you know you could feel, as the reader could feel the pain and vulnerability, and and you know, just the the incredible emotional damage that was done by stripping Elena bare. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. You know, it, it, it was an inc- it, it, in a story that has so much humor and action. That was a, a truly emotional, um, emotional moment. Yeah. Yeah, it was. And, and for for Kate to be able to, to relate to that and to save Luis, um, really solidified you know their their being together their destiny together yeah and of course she pissed that away to go back to (laughs) you know uh, uh, the the present in a situation of of wanting to you know adopt a child which she didn't really have a tie to except for by the Controlling girlfriend, I just, just uh, that and, and, the, and the fifteen minutes that she spent with him. Yeah, but that's the second book because the first one ends with them happily together in oh, the please. field. Where <laughs> yeah, don't get me started. Don't get me started. I, I know, but you know the the second book. Let's just go on ahead and launch off into it. The second. No, book, no, no, no. Let's not because we're already an hour and eleven minutes in. I'm going to have to cut the crap out of this as it is. All right, all right, all right. Fine. Okay, so here's our here's the deal. Here's the deal, dear dear listeners. Um, both stories really good. A few, <laughs> each of them had areas where we had to jump up and say, "Oh, that's such bullshit." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But overall, overall, both of them very different, very different historical gender bending stories. Um, and one, well, well worth the read. Absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. Um, so, well, there you go. Go go buy them. Go read them. Um, they're really good. Yeah, they are. They're definitely good. Okay, so uh, do we know what we're doing next week or no? Or next in the I, two weeks? I, I'm i going to say that we stick with uh, the the new thing that we kind of talked about. Oh, and um, it's just going to be a little different for you listeners, kind of. So this is what we had planned on doing. We are going to be, because Andy is... Um, has become addicted to the hollows, which um, I don't know if everybody is aware of what those are, but that is the um, the series of books by Kim Harrison. They are mainstream books. There is a lesbian character. Um, I've read the first book. I understand when I asked if Ivy, the lesbian vampire, ever has sex, this was the response I got. 
it's complicated. <laughs> it is. It's complicated. Which, which to uh. me means, no, no, she never gets to have sex. But I may be wrong, and we're not going to talk about that right now. So what we're going to do is Andy's already read all of the series except for the first book, which baffles me, but that's okay. And I've read only the first book, and I will attempt to remedy that over the next two weeks. So we're going to talk about the Hollow series Mm -hmm. by Kim Harrison. And if it kills me, (laughs) I will find... (laughs) I will find a Hollow's fanfic that we can talk about. That's worth a damn. That's worth a damn. Okay, so I'm counting on you. I know. I know that amongst you wonderful, lovely readers, someone, one of you, has had to have gotten into some Hollows fanfic and will be able to recommend something for us. Yeah, okay? that would be that would be very appreciated. That's that's what we're looking for. So next next time, episode eleven mm-hmm. will be Hollows. All hollows all the time. <laughs> it's the hollow show. <laughs> the hollow show. I'm right. looking forward to it, yeah. All right. Well, thank okay. you, thank you, Ref, for uh, a wonderful show. And uh, I'm excited about uh, doing the hollows in two weeks. I know you are. And, and I look for. Tell me, tell me, tell me very quickly mm-hmm. which of the um, 157 books in the series <laughs> <laughs> was your favorite? Ooh. Hmm. Probably the last one. Okay. Well, shit. I, I don't think I'm going to be able to get to that in two weeks, um, particularly because I'm finishing up the epic Words Heard in Silence by T. Novin and Taylor Rickard. However, I now I want to read The, the Crown of Valencia, too. God oh, damn man. it. Oh, There's not enough time in the day. And there isn't. I'm going to have to take like two weeks off of work just to try and fit it all in. So, um, okay. So anyway, so next time it's the hollows. So, uh, ladies get to reading and yep. I look forward to hearing what you have to say. Find us a goddamn fic. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, good night all. Ciao for now. Adios. <laughs>